Hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Akron. Hello, Boulder. Hello, Tampa St. Saint Pete. Hello, New Harmony. Hello, Moberly. <laughs> Hello, Neverly. Where is my website? Not the app. Is this working? Hi, Scott. Hi, Pat Thomas. Thanks for your help. Hey, see, cow. I, that, that came out a little less sincere than it was intended. Thank you very much for your help. I need all the help I can get. And especially from people who kind of know what they're doing. And you obviously know what the hell you're doing. Just for being so nice, I won't point out that you need a comma after hello. <laughs> hello, comma, America. <laughs> But since you were so nice, I won't point that out. Hi, Kevin. You guys getting this alert from YouTube, or did you get this alert from subscribing to the new site? I could care less, except it's the phrase is actually I could not care less. And two, you you want to you want to get your alerts from that site. The live streaming is going to go back to hopping around like a scalded cat. <laughs> Because that's just way too expensive right now. But I have some very pleasant news coming your way. Let's let people get logged on. Okay, let me try this. I know I need to get a, a landing page so that, like... But if you didn't get the alert <clears throat> to the post about today's episode to log in that way. I don't need you going to a landing page looking for it late yet. I don't really know yet exactly what I really need or want on that landing page or how many landing pages I really need. You know, thomashenryhorn.com. That's, I'm figuring that one out. <laughs> YouTube and email, that's good. Lots of live streams, because I need to start promoting the site, will be coming from this particular YouTube channel. But ticklish episodes, pff, those will be live streamed, catch as catch can. You'll have to be subscribed to the site, which you should be anyway for those live streams. However, when it comes to hosting dead videos, when it comes to, you know, I trim them. Like, I haven't played the theme yet. You know, I trim it and I re-upload it. Those, I have found... At least one storage solution I think we're all going to like. Join now. Well, maybe I could show you live. Maybe I'll do that. Remember she, P levels. This will be fixed. As God is my witness, this will be fixed. This style, this, not style, this theme works with, with everything I do, but this font is just too big. I just have to tear into the, I just need to tweak little things about the appearance because I know mobile is real important to people. I love how WordPress, my word, you know, my mobile friendly score is like 47%. But word that's not my fault. That's WordPress's fault. WordPress is not mobile friendly yet. They're working on it. That's the only problem I have with WordPress. Because they're the the contract I have with them is basically essentially common carrier, so they won't be babysitting me. I am responsible for babysitting myself, but they won't be babysitting me, so. Lots of live streams, especially this coming spring and summer, will be coming over YouTube, and particu particularly this one. Free episodes, like I'm going to try something in the next episode. Today's episode's not finished yet. 
I don't know how long you were waiting to hear that. <laughs> Today's episode is not finished yet. I'm trying to do a different kind of episode. I'm really good at doing the episode where your eyes glaze over from all the minutiae. Crucial though it may be. I need to start making videos that attract new viewers. <laughs> So I kind of like this idea, a live stream, there will be a post, live stream coming up. Then, like, when, when there are at least two or three episodes on the same general topic that seem to go together, I'll create a new post, and then I will do a live stream, like maybe on Monday night instead of Sunday or whatever. Um, I don't know if today's episode will be ready for tomorrow night or not, but... Keep watching the skis. Keep watching all your updates. And then I would do <clears throat> like a summary of the past three or four episodes. It's just a little more comprehensive, just a little more comprehensible. It's like, why would you set through those five episodes? Yes, I understand that you're 100% right, Professor. Mwah. But why should I watch? And so I'm trying to come up with an episode like that. So to summarize the most recent episodes, I've tried to make like a little trailer and see how that goes. Yeah. I think if I just do a live stream or I say, here's what we've been working on so far, you should join. Uh, and then that would help not only new viewers, existing viewers would probably appreciate the occasional, let's stop and summarize the bullet points episode. But I don't plan for those to be substitutes for weekly premium episodes. Those would be a bonus episode. And then there, there's that new post page that has the summary episode and I can you know, a trailer and then the summary episode and then join to get the full details and to join the discussion community. Hi, Red Feather. Hi, Creepy Crawl. Hi, Drew. Sorry, Drew. Um, I have promised more than I'm delivering this week. <laughs> this week's episodes are not done yet. This is still helping people get signed up on the new site. I need to get you your promo code. Did you get one? Did you get one in the email thing? I'll make sure you get one for sure. Something that's coming real soon is, so like when I do a live stream from YouTube, you guys are welcome to use the YouTube chat. You're welcome to tip me in the YouTube chat. <laughs> However, what we're getting, we're getting video, you know, recorded, edited video playback with a very exciting new feature. So I'm going to wait till I play the theme and wait till people get logged on. Pat Thomas got yours. That's great. I wanted to make sure that Drew got his. Okay. Um, good. Very good. So, um... We're going to get chat. We were, We are going, we, the royal we, we will all be. So we'll have like, like, it'll be like this. You'll get a post that comes from my website. And in that post, there's the embedded YouTube player. And then you click on that to click play. I know that's a pain in the ass, but I need to be able to host videos on different platforms. But, but every, all subscribers pay on one platform and access videos on one platform. Because I may have to take a video down from one platform and re-upload it to another one. I'm not creating a new post page for that. Get used to that. But the video play and storage I'm looking at has some exciting features. And then the chats, we're all going, so what we'll do is like we'll have a YouTube ep episode. People can chat in the YouTube chat window, but that belongs to YouTube. If I edit the video, it goes away. There will be chat, live chat, on the subscriber-only section of the... Um, post and that I'm looking at chats that are like restream like um I'm not knocking restream but they're look you know we'll see we'll see you know they're tech technically I, I don't I think I don't think I can stream 1080p I think I can only live stream 720p and then re-upload 1080p onto the storage thing but point is voice chat we'll be getting that there are several chat plugins I can get for this website. Their cost, it's live chat and live stream cost a fortune. But if I can keep taking, taking advantage of YouTube and hopping and skipping on YouTube and Twitch 
and OnlyFans. Now, see, OnlyFans doesn't have an Im embeddable video player. So, of course, we're going to play with chat. <clears throat> and some of those have chat. And some of those have really cool chat. But get chat with, uh, you can call in. I, you know, I can say, hey, call in, like Manny does. He'll have people in his chat who can call in. I'm not knocking Restream. Restream had a couple of features we don't necessarily like. But I use Restream if I want to multi-stream to Facebook, Twitter, and which I will be doing a lot more of to promote the channel. And talking about Zodiac <clears throat> and things like that when the time comes. Uh, I just got lightheaded from talking so much. I'm so excited because all the little things I thought we were going to get, we didn't get. And now I'm just, I'm done. And keeping the overhead cost way lower is, is a huge help. So, um, but I just needed time to put the website together and do things like that. It's, <laughs> it's open for business, but bear with me. Let me get the thing started. I'll press record. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. You're in violation of secure communication. Okay, hold on. I'm having trouble with the record button. Communication procedures, Commodore. As a shareholder and director, of, I'm always proud of Walmart. There is no America. Okay, one more time. You, me. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. You're in violation of secure communication procedures, Commodore. As a shareholder and director, of, I'm always proud of Walmart. There is no America. There is no democracy. Fifth objective, a new world order. There are no nations. There are no Russians. There are no Russians. There are no Arabs. There are no third worlds. There is no West. What do you call it when the assassins accuse the assassin? A new world order. Thank you for plugging in to the Stones Unturned podcast. The boosters are behind us 100%. I'm your host, Professor Thomas Henry Horan. He reads everything. You better bet your bippies he reads everything. Hello and welcome, you bodacious boosters and uh, new boosters and buckaroos. I am indeed Professor Thomas Henry Horan, and this is indeed... <laughs> Stones unturned. Don't mind. I'm not shifty eyed. I have a lot of meters and things to keep track of. <laughs> Which reminds me, does is it rude for me to turn away and watch the video that you're looking at? If I try to put the monitor up here, if I look up there, that seems a little pompous. <laughs> and I'd have to mount the monitor on the wall. But I'm watching the videos. Number one, there will be no more eating of cough drops on the air. Uh, I, you have my word on that. Number two, like, is it, is it more pompous to look down at what you're looking at? Or is it more pompous to look up at what you're looking at? Cause I can't put it up there. There's a light up. There's all kinds of, I can't put it directly above. And if I put this over here on this monitor, it's too small. I can't read it <laughs> to read. I have to watch the second monitor, which is being captured by OBS through the magical process of special effects. So this today's episode is not finished yet. So, but a lot of people haven't had a chance to sign up yet on the new site. So get signed up on the new site. Look at the links in the description of this video. I will run you through it, but the, I'll run you through. But there are, um, one of those links is to a video that shows you how to sign up. If you were due a promo code, check your email. You got a promo code. If you were due one, the rest of you chumps, you follow that video and sign up, please. Um, if, if, uh, yeah, just at least subscribe to the email alert so you know what's going on. So as I was explaining earlier, and I will explain again. Hi, Leash. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Medley. Hi, Orfeo. 
Hi, Pat. I said, I know I said hi, but for the benefit of the people who weren't here, hi, Creepy Crawl. Hi, Baby Bull. Pat Thomas has already been a big help. Hi, Drew. Drew Beeson here today. He showed up expecting this red-hot episode. This has been postponed a couple of days. It, it's I. The problem is the episode I'm putting together is probably far too ticklish for the for YouTube, and I want to do the next live stream on YouTube to to attract new viewers or people who were waiting. <laughs> yeah, like when when he gets the other site actually straightened out, I'll subscribe, and I don't blame you in the slightest. So I'm uploading the best of the episodes that you all have been missing the last six to nine months on the new website. You have to subscribe there. Then there are embedded video players. But there are. There's a much better embedded embedded video player coming. I'm going to test things. I've got... Um, I'm going to be busy. I'm substituting for uh, somebody who's uh, out... Uh, going to be out having her baby. and Maternity leave. That's the phrase I'm looking for. So i um, be busy for a couple of weeks there. But then that's it. So... The next episode that's coming, I've got to make a YouTube-friendly version. <laughs> but again, for those of you who are just tuning in, or those of you who have never tuned in before, we call it plugging in. Number two, hi, Red Feather. What, what's going to happen is, I, you know, I've been making some really super detailed, it's just every crumb of evidence. It's incontrovertible. It's irrefutable. It's overwhelming. It's also a lot to dive into in media res. And every episode I've been making for the last few years has been pretty much rough draft episodes on each topic. Now it's getting to the point where I can really honestly say to uh, Joe Sixpack and Susie, <laughs> what do you call those packages of birth control pills? <laughs> something blister pack that it's you should plug in because on the new website instead of playlists there are like blog posts okay that have a summary very teasy very search engine optimized you know very suck you in there will be a at least a teaser video which you see a couple of now like trailers like i just take clips and put them together and they're they're okay but to do episodes maybe once a month that summarizes what we've been doing and then you subscribe and you go to that post where two, three, four episodes are all together. And then so and I think a lot of people who are keeping up with the detailed episodes, I, listen, I understand how many details there are for me to keep track of. I, I'm throwing this stuff at you. Most of you guys, it's 90 percent brand new material. So I think doing a monthly summary episode, which won't count as the premium episodes, I'll do those publicly, hopefully on YouTube, to, to attract more viewers. And then <clears throat> that'll just maybe help everybody. It kind of helps me. And I could get a lot more sponsors and things if I could demonstrate my ability to do those kinds of episodes. <laughs> I'm just getting my head wrapped around so much of what we're doing. So, And remember, this is not really an entertainment show, this one, the Stones Unturned podcast. It's entertaining. That's just gravy. I'm entertaining. That's just gravy. What this show is about is real crowdsourced investigation led by somebody who knows what the hell he's doing. And people who, there are people who know this, they know that, they can contribute, and then um, I get all the glory. <laughs> well, speaking of which, like, for example... Um, those of you who don't know me, you, you may find this hard to believe. I'm not that easy to get along with. So over the years, a couple of people like Evan from Texas have contacted me and I have just been so used before, before I started the podcast, I had no fans. I had nothing but haters, which was fine. I'm like, bring on the critique and let's, you know, cause this book right here, if you haven't read this book, you don't know anything about the so-called Zodiac killer. Okay. While I was writing this book, I had a blog and we discussed every every page of every police report, which no one ever bothered to read except me. And it turns out that everything we thought we knew about the Zodiac Killer turns out to be a huge hoax put on by Robert Graysmith in this book full of fiction that he wrote called Zodiac. And he followed it up with more fiction. OK, that's all lies. He had access to the original police department files, autopsy reports, ballistics, evidence, photos letters. He just lied about it all. In real life, there was no serial killer. There was no Zodiac killer. 
Those murders may or may not have been related, but they were more likely related to ordinary crime, underworld crime. And those letters to the newspapers, the evidence doesn't prove that they came from the killer. The actual evidence proves that they could not possibly have come from the killer. That leads us directly to the person who actually wrote the letters and whose handwriting really does match from A to Z and a bunch of symbols in between, upper and lower case, and, okay, matches the Zodiac letters and a whole bunch of corroborating evidence. If you haven't read this book, you know nothing about the so-called Zodiac killer case. Also, it gives you an idea of what this show is about. This show is not about witnesses remembering bullshit from 40 years ago. This episode is not about bullshit witnesses that crawl out of the woodwork 40 years later. Even pe like survivors, right? Survivors of ritual satanic abuse. Well, they're messed up as a result of their abuse. They're not reliable witnesses. I don't waste time with that. I don't put them through the trauma when it's just going to be something that's so easy for people to dismiss. I don't do that. On this podcast, we're looking at real estate records, tax records, government documents, police reports, actual evidence, and what it really tells us about these high-profile cases. It's not just that the Manson family uh, baloney got blown out of proportion. There's something more serious going on. He didn't accidentally get blown up into the uh, baloney story that you've seen. Uh uh, 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 Tom O'Neill, right? Tom O'Neill, chaos. And he's, I think he's working on a follow-up. He does a lot. I mean, he does a really good job of debunking Bugliosi and, and, and goes pretty far in de debunking the case against the Manson kids. But when we look at the actual reports and autopsy photographs, there's no evidence of any kind those kids ever murdered anybody. They weren't mind-controlled into becoming killers. They were mind-controlled into thinking they had been mind-controlled into becoming killers. So they would give these phony confessions. And they are phony, just like the confessions in the Zodiac Killer letters are proven to be phony by the actual police reports. The confessions by the Manson family and counter accusations are all phony, except those of Danny DiCarlo, who was not a member of the Manson family. He just hid out there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what this podcast is about. And doing the podcast, I have learned not only are these cases actually connected to each other, but they're connected much deeper, right? We've built up a very clear picture that a lot of you really don't see yet, but I can see it. I'm just, it takes a long time to put out these episodes because there's so, there's so much information, a pretty complete picture of what's been going on for the last hundred years. Who's doing it? Who's doing it now? What are they doing now? How many of these school shootings like, look at the ones that there's no media coverage compared to the ones where there was massive media coverage. The ones with massive media coverage, that's where it seems to be the fishiest. Nine, and, then, and then you get these conspiracy theories that seem to be manufactured and promoted heavily in order to distract from the real conspiracy that was going on, like 9-11. This conspiracy theory about the explosives in the building, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's the disinfo prop because there's, it's, it's a ridiculous theory. But it covers up what really happened. They were actually running a drill that day on the entire eastern seaboard of North America. Hijackers hijacking multiple airplanes and crashing them into buildings like the Pentagon. They were running a drill that day. And this is not, a, this is all government documents. But the bullshit conspiracy theory about the explosives planted before, beforehand, that can be easily debunked. That's the one that they do. That's chum. That's the chum they put in the water. They have a mechanism for doing this. And it's called Operation Mockingbird. And we have been slowly identifying one of the single most important members. Not with... Not with wild stories, not with hearsay, but with actual documents. But that takes a while, and it's overwhelming. It's like the pollen in the air today here in the Midwest. It's like a fucking snow globe. A snow globe of yellow snow. It's just blow, it's windy and sunny, and the pollen is everywhere. It's that time of year. I don't know how long my voice will hold up. So bear with me for the next month, next five to six weeks. 
I know I've said that a million times, and I'll say it a million more times. If you don't like the show, this is it. This is the show. No, I'm taking it up a notch. And okay, so the ch- the on the new site, there were, I can use several different embedded video players. The one I think we're going to get real soon here. I, I need to talk to their sales staff this week and double check some things. We're talking, but we're very close to a deal. How about search inside the video? How about that? You bastards, you ungrateful bastards. How about you type in the name Manson and it goes through the video and every time anybody says the word Manson, it takes you to that bookmark. How about you put in the face of Charles Manson and it automatically find, searches to every place where the face of Charles Manson pops up or Bill Clinton. How about that? How about that for starters? And this is very reasonably priced and it's common carrier uh, uh, but no tech, there's no support. <laughs> but I think I've learned, I think I've learned, I'll do the free trials. And other really awesome features at a very, re- we can afford this. We can afford this. At the current subscriber levels I had before, I blew up everything again. Talk about the podcaster, podcaster calling Manny black or calling Manny crazy. How do you like them Apple? You Manny Manny thinks he knows how to burn down a YouTube channel. <laughs> how do you like them apples, Manny? <laughs> You're not the only one. No, this is the real website I've been planning for years. I wasn't planning to have it go live for a couple more years, but and then I thought, okay, I'm getting retired now. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I'm back to work double time. Now I'm retired again. So here we go. And with classes I have to offer and, you know, I've just, and I've learned enough. Don't eat cough drops on the air. (laughs) Check your, check the meters. (laughs) You look shifty eyed, but (laughs) where was I? And lots of other cool playback features. I haven't even had a chance to, to do a free trial on. So that looks really cool. And if we get back to those subscriber levels by August or whatever, you know, we're going to be sitting pretty. And um, even if we have to pay, but but chat and live streaming are really expensive, but there are solutions. There are solutions. But with live chat, with P- PM, PM each other, di- you know, direct message the host so I don't have to watch the chat the whole time. I can just see when a direct, because Restream does that. We may be doing more Restream for, just for the live streaming, but I don't want to pay for the hosting. We'll see. We'll see. I think it's like $3 a month. Manny, do you pay $3 a month for your Restream account? That would be worth it to get a chat window like this, but it's not as, they're not as ticklish as YouTube. And they, you know, uh, the, the permanent, the edited trimmed down version would be hosted on another site anyway. Or as I call them, spider holes. <laughs> Keep my videos <laughs> filed away in spider holes. So if you haven't downloaded those episodes from the, the most recent... <laughs> imploded website they just didn't deliver on things that they're supposed to have delivered on several months ago and then when i couldn't respond to comments there was some glitch somewhere i'm like i have a pretty good idea what the problem is are you just using are you just charging me to set up a a wordpress site is that what you're doing but but with the video hosting but see they were renting their they were renting their bandwidth from amazon anyway so um there's no point in making people pay for that when we can get something better for now that I know what I'm doing. And thank you for bearing with me and making it worthwhile for me to learn, to get it right, to get it for you guys. Um, now we've got it. And I can do other. Now Now I can get a workflow going. I can start doing which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to read the news. Okay. So we're going to get really cool features, even cooler than I was even promised at Uscreen. You know, I'm not really knocking Uscreen. It just didn't quite deliver. And honestly, that's because they wanted to sell me an app. Now I've learned enough. I could probably do my own app, but if you want to host it on rock, you, you want to host your app on Apple TV. If you want to host your app on, um, what does Google call it? Their box, their dongle, whatever you have to pay them. But as far as the technical stuff, I mean, I'm getting the hang of it. And Pat Thomas knows a lot. I'd sooner pay Pat Thomas. Help me design an app or something. So 
but this is where it's at. <laughs> I'm very sorry, sort of, about dragging you around. Don't tell me you didn't get good episodes. Those are rough draft episodes that will be resynthesized and but it's massive. It is a massive conspiracy. Not a, it's not it's not it's a blob. It's a blob. Then there's a blob on the blob that tries to control the blob. Like that brain fungus. Cordyceps that the insects get. There's a blob on top of that. Of course, Peter would know a lot more about that than I would. Who else do I need to say hello to? Let me show you. Let's do the hi Audrey. Chromecast. That's right, Chromecast. They get your app. I don't think I think between the two of us, me and Pat Thomas could develop an app. <laughs> For this, like like you screen, but really WordPress, if they just, and, you know, and I'm learning and I can tweak and Pat Thomas knows how to tweak things. Maybe I want to keep it simple for all of us, but it's, we're, it's coming together. That's very close to what I was hoping it would be. And I'm just learning what's the well, featured image and how does that work? And got to download this plugin and that plugin change this color where I'm, I'm almost on top of that, but I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to get real fancy, but chat, we're going to try several different chats. So you'll be like a YouTube episode where the chat's going in YouTube and the chat's going on my website. And then, cause then that way I can save the chat. It will always be there. You know, it might not be synchronized live chat replay. Now the live streaming platform I'm looking at, you know, see if you need live streaming plus storage, that cost escalates astronomically. If you buy your live streaming and your storage separately, that reduces the cost tremendously. <laughs> so, but some of the, the one in particular, I think it's Daycast or Caster. Those are the two I'm looking at. Reasonable prices, um, we might try free trials. They have like really rich chat features as well, but I can't pay to host a, that's the thing. It would be for live streaming only. So I'm thinking like Twitch restream, like many uses, I think, the package I assume he uses, I think it's three bucks a month. I mean, I, we can afford that. Danny and Sherry speak. Oh, you're not talking to me. Where's the interview? Orpheus, listen, I need to add, can you use Google Pay? I should, it should accept Google Pay now. I just need to log into Apple and copy and paste some crap into Apple to get Apple Pay to work. PayPal integration is like they went $30, $40 a month. I'm not paying that. But we'll see. I'm trying to come up with more payment methods. Um, I think Amazon Pay will work now. It's Stripe. So now what may happen is if, if anything goes wrong, quit, take screenshots and copy the links and send them to me because a lot of it is just me. There's, there's a thing called a webhook. Pat Thomas, I'm sure knows what I'm talking about. I didn't. I have to activate millions of these things manually. <laughs> so sometimes what happens is you're using your card, your card pops up. You got to put in your CV code. Well, I haven't manually so sometimes I don't, there, it, it, it has to fail for somebody before it gives me a thing that I need to manually approve. So if anything goes wrong in the membership process, quit and send me a screenshot. You should at least be able to subscribe to the email alerts. And it's going to be a couple of weeks before you even think about getting behind. But I'll be uploading clusters of the better episodes of that you've been missing on their own post. So you just need to pay for a membership for that. If you didn't get a promo code, go ahead and sign up. I'll make it worth your while. There will be material for you to see, but at least subscribe to the free email alerts, but you will need to create a web, a WordPress account. You must be logged in on that WordPress account. I think I got my login link fixed. If you look at that. So there's a video about all this. I'm not going to walk you through it. I don't want to do something wrong and confuse you, let alone me. So what we're going to do Danny DiCarlo interview. Yeah, okay. That's the one you're talking about. Unsubscribe to the other sites. No, you all I should I have manually canceled every subscription on Patreon, Uscreen, and Vimeo, as far as I know. If anybody ever gets charged, let me know. It's a thousand times easier for me to give you credit than it is to issue a refund. But <laughs> 
if you need refunds, I understand. I will initiate them. You should not be. And if you got any kind of a promo code for the, the new site, thomashenryhorn.com, if you got a promo code for that, Whenever that subscription expires, you will not be auto-billed until you manually resubscribe. You will not be auto-billed for anything. You should not be auto-billed for anything. Yet. Those of you who are signing up, it's $9.99 a month, and you will be auto-billed. Unless you cancel. Um, but that includes not just this show, but there'll be more and more material all the time. Maybe my... Maybe my the slideshows I use, I can share those as PDFs. Because if I share them as PDFs, there won't be any copyright material I need to be worrying about. Um, if I uh, Other materials, you'll have access to files. If you, like I said, I don't really have home pages or, or menu pages created yet. But if you look at the, um, and I'm going to, I'll be updating. If you bought the Kindle version of this book, then the the they have clickable links for footnotes. They take you to the old, an old website that never really got finished. And I'm not accepting new members on that website. I'm not tearing it down. But there, there will be robust discussion boards. I think Pat Thomas volunteered to help with that. Maybe we'll get you free, get you something free there. Um, especially like if you're going to like be the master moderator, maybe something, something like. Not, I'm not picking on you. And that'll be a very robust. But then there's the comments. Right now, there, I've got three levels of nested comment going, okay, that the members have access to. On these blog posts where I, I collect several episodes in a topic cluster, and then maybe I go back and I do a, a resummary and reemphasis, do that more systematically and more, more viewer-friendly, start using some of that talent I have. <laughs> And then, um, and then there would even be like a, tra a five, 10 minute trailer video also that would go with it. And then there's discussion and you guys can attach pictures and you can attach PDFs, not to mention links. It's going to work the way I was hoping the other place was going to work. I wanted to host my classes and that's just not working. It's working much better over here. All right. My Moodle account was great. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with YouTube. It's a great place to start. You'll get some viewers. You introduce yourself to viewers. But all of the traffic, like if I create a, a search engine optimized headline for this episode today, all that traffic goes to YouTube's website, not mine. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not burning down my YouTube. I'm not bitching about my deal with YouTube, but it's a limited deal. Whereas if you have to go to my website just to get the link to go watch the YouTube video, then traffic is coming to my site. I intend to keep the site ad free. Have I ever mentioned that? We'll see how that goes. You know, 20 years from now, maybe when I'm old, put ads, um, except ads for my stuff. There won't be room for any ads except ads for my books. I've got other books for sale. I will, I'll, I will have merchandise. Because once I get this ugly mug on television, we're going to get some publicity. And I really don't want a million subscribers. I don't want 100,000 subscribers. I kind of like the crowd I have. I just want it a little bit bigger. 200 subscribers. My business model would be tickled pink. I'll take more. <laughs> but I'm not trying to get a million subscribers. I'm trying to keep the show. But I need to make it, even for you guys who hang in there, some of you are just hanging in there. And your eyes are just glazing over. So I'm going to try to, uh, but these are rough draft episodes. I'm presenting and going back to giving credit where credit is due. Manny likes to remind me about this. So Evan from Texas contacts me and I bite his head off. I could do every other hater. Six months later, he contacts me again. I'm gonna, he's like, I'm going to try one more time, you son of a bitch. And then it's like, oh, wow, this really is interesting. Like he dug up so much stuff about the guy who wrote the Zodiac Killer letters. After I identified the guy and he took up my challenge proving me wrong and he couldn't prove me wrong, then he, then he goes out at his own expense and does a lot of other research. Well, this happened, you know, started this podcast on YouTube and blah, 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 blah. And there's a guy coming on my old discussion board website and he's prickly pear like a lot of us are. And I end up banning the guy. Well, he comes back under a new username. Like, what's it been? Six months? Barney was six. Uh, now his name is Barney, and he has dug up so much really good stuff. And it, a lot of it was like, 
It's like Manny. It's like some of this other stuff. Like you were really close. You were really close. But it wasn't this this guy wasn't his dad. This guy was his dad. And that's even more interesting, which makes it interesting. He's like, why is he pretending this guy was his dad when his dad was actually more interesting than that? So Barney's one of those guys. So he, it's been six months and now finally these most recent episodes, all this stuff about maybe I don't, I don't want to rat people out on the air. That's another thing. I don't mind giving credit. I don't want to rat people out. But he's, it's like, wow, man, you really did. And he's one of these guys who gave me a second chance. <laughs> Because I get 99% hate. So, um, which I love. My haters made me famous. My haters got me on TV. This uh, historian, media historian, Bill Black, wrote an article about my haters. And that's what got me the TV deal. He literally wrote, and I've been saying for years, I said on my blog, my haters make me famous. My haters make me famous. And they do. I learned that lesson from Rush Limbaugh. Your haters make you famous. Not to mention Jesus. Your haters make you famous. Rumble for live streaming? I'll check it out. Is it an embeddable player? I need to see if Restream is an embeddable player. YouTube is an embeddable live streaming player. That's why I keep using it. It's just I'm tickling the dragon's nose with almost every episode. And I think, and this is technically against the rules, I think if I just delete a live stream as soon as it's over, it won't have time to digest it and get so ticklish. Now, that's not going to last. I mean, I just, you know... <laughs> You need to subscribe to the site, but that's one. Then if you subscribe, if you're a monthly subscriber, you're going to get really nice discounts on classes. And if I have to charge for like pay-per-views and things like that down the road, like if I, now here's another thing. I shot my mouth off about going to West Memphis and doing a live stream, maybe from a scooter. And I got a lot of emails from a lot of people who I'd never heard from before saying, really, dude, you don't want to do that. <laughs> and you sure as hell don't want to do it don't, running around with a camera. So that, that will be one of those George Bush in Iraq type. If I, if that ever happens, there's a lot of places I can go. There are a lot of places I want to go that have nothing to do with true crime. I want to start doing my Paul Harvey ripoff show. If, if Dr. Gene Scott in his later years, when he'd mellowed out, if he had had the folksy charm, right? And Paul Harvey. I want to be the Paul Harvey of May Brussels. I want to go to quilting bees. I want to go to county fairs. I want to go to pig judging contests. I want to go to machine gun bikini chick contest. That's what I'm hoping I'll get. A, when I'm, once I'm on TV, it's like, you know, personal appearances. I'm going to start being really picky. I got to get my thing set up for personal to book personal appearances, which are probably going to be few and far between because I'm getting old and I don't travel well. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I was spoiled rotten. I've been spoiled rotten on these trips, and it's all I can take. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. Now, to make an appearance on your stream and on your, you know, between now and whenever this thing gets on TV, I'll do anything for free. I'll be on anybody's podcast. I'll be on anybody's podcast. I don't. Listen, I will not. Now, you know, let's say Neo starts a podcast. He has me on and he starts being an asshole. That's a different story. But don't be afraid that I'm going to bite your head off just because you're a beginning podcast. As long as you're making a sincere effort, I'll be on your podcast. As long as I can do it from home. We can do Zoom, we can do audio only, we can do whatever. But Restream, as a live stream, you know, they have the audio chat. That's how Manny gets his guests on there, and I think it's great. Um, Rumble has an embeddable player for live streaming. A drone would be better? Yeah, I guess one controlled from the South Pole. I guess it's a pretty rough town these days. You know, and they're like saying, you're running around with a camera and just asking for trouble. And you certainly don't want to announce that you're going to be going there. <laughs> there are other places I can go that if it's not too long of a trip, like I can take the city of New Orleans. You can book me. 
very reasonable price. You can book me a private room on the city of New Orleans. I can come to Chicago. I can come to New Orleans on the city of New Orleans or Memphis. I could just go to Memphis. Um, um, but to book me on your Zoom or your, I, I'm down. I'm down. And then after I'm famous, depending on who you are, like that, you know, the rates are going to go up. You don't want to know what I'm going to charge to testify in court, which I, I don't think I've ever, it never gets past the deposition stage. I mean, I've testified in court, but not as a handwriting or question documents expert. I have more experience, but, but I'm not certified. I'm not, I'm not in that profession, the professional group, because my degrees are in English. They're not in chemistry or whatever. I didn't train at a government lab. People don't understand. Fundamentals of question documents examination, I'm more than qualified to teach that class, and I will be offering that class soon. Fundamentals of handwriting analysis, handwriting identification, I can teach pretty advanced classes in that because there are no, there's no PhD in handwriting analysis. Handwriting analysis is just, it's not like fingerprint analysis and identification. It's not. There's skill. There's science. I'm as good at it as anybody I've ever seen. I, I've seen, I've seen some high profile, high priced experts stick their necks way out <laughs> beyond anything I would ever. But see, once I'm on TV, that's what they're paying for. And my ability to explain, you can't, you can't talk over the jury's head. You have to explain it to them in a way that they see what you see. Who do you think is really good at that? Who do you think is really good under cross-examination? It's got a lot to do with cross-examination. But, no, I've never testified in court on a handwriting case or a question documents case. It never got that far. If a case goes to trial, the lawyers didn't do their job. So the judge is automatically pissed off. And the judge is really pissed off at whoever decided they needed a trial. Whether it's criminal or civil, whoever decided we're going to trial... That you've made an enemy for life out of that judge. And you will be treated like a rented mule in that courtroom. No judge will break a will for any reason. They will find excuses. They will find, they will go through the code of Hammurabi looking for an excuse not to break a will. Whoever gets to probate court first, whoever gets to the clerk's office first, first and enters their will into probate. That is the will that will eventually be enforced by the courts. I've never seen a, a probate judge break a will. The whoever got there first, whoever got there first, they will not do that. You, 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 a judge will never make a decision over a ruling. That's not what they're there for. And it's your fault for not settling this out of court. What else? Um, yeah. There will, you'll, you'll get discounts on all that. <laughs> yeah, you know nothing about the business. But these people with these names, I'm like, I wouldn't even take that case. But once you're on TV, once you're on TV making one of the most famous handwriting identifications of all time, All of a sudden, my per diem. Expert witness 7,500? Yeah, that was before I was on TV. <laughs> uh, you don't want to know what Werner Spitz charges. He's, he gets, I don't know if he's ever going to know what these people get. And it's just an expert opinion. It's really who pays the most for the expert opinion. So I don't know. I mean, it's like I've never seen a case get beyond discovery. You know, they always settle. So I've never testified in a question documents case. Hi, John. Hi, Lisa. I don't know whose side I was on in the Gwyneth Paltrow case.
stream stall, don't tick of the bar, that's YouTube. But, do, but have no fear because all, like this live stream episode will be edited and re-uploaded. Well, maybe not this one. Yeah, that's one drawback with, you, with, with YouTube, the quality of the stream. But the convenience of the stream is, is sky high. And, you know, the, the thing is they need to stop focusing on bringing traffic to YouTube or Facebook and bring traffic to thomashenryhorn.com, even if it's only a fraction of what I've been sending to other places. The woman claiming to be Madeline McCann is a con artist. Um, I know I haven't... Oh, hi, Medley. Uh, thank you for asking. Thank you for that question. She's a con artist. And she's not the only one. But she's being enabled by Scotland Yard and by, the, and by Interpol, Europol, to cover up the fact. And they know, they know, they know about me now. I mean, they know that. The British tabloids know about me. I found Madeleine McCann alive and well, but it wasn't that broad and it wasn't where she was living. <laughs> Nowhere near where she was living. But since Madeline's not in any danger, never was in any danger, I she's been living with a, looks like a really nice middle, you know, British middle class foster family. All the best schools, horseback riding, you name it. Very nice family. I'd be invading her privacy and bear one thing in mind. She might not know who she is. She was just a couple days shy of her fourth birthday when she disappeared. She might not really remember. But if somebody wants to put the money up, I'll take it to the, I'll take it to her, probably take it to her house. <laughs> very easy to find. As soon as I figured out what really happened in that case, she was very easy to find. That's another reason I kept my mouth shut. See, in the country where she lives, she's a minor, the minor's right to privacy until she's 18. She could choose to make herself a public figure. I've been waiting for her to make herself a public figure like Elizabeth Smart. But she might not even know who she is. She may suspect and not know. We just don't know. And I don't want to bother her. People who took her in looked like they were really nice. They weren't chosen from at random out of the phone book, but they looked like looked like she's had a nice life. So Yeah, just drop frames. It could be the internet here, it could be. But it's much more common with YouTube. That's the thing. Live streaming on YouTube's a tad sketchy. So but thank you for letting me know. Why was she taken? She was the bait. Apparently, the motive's not 100% clear, but apparently what happened was, uh, and this seems to be the most likely motive, Gerald McCann, you remember, they had fertility issues, and they're doctors. So when Kate got pregnant the first time, apparently Gerald got the idea in his head that Kate had had an affair and that this child was not actually his. Because it wasn't Kate's problem. The in vitro wasn't because of Kate. It was because of Gerald. So he's already feeling, and he is a sociopath and he is a narcissist and he is a control freak. So I, apparently he got the idea in his head that she was not his child or this, she started getting, see the pictures that you've seen of her, that's not what she looked like the day she disappeared at all. They didn't want anybody finding her. They went around and pressured these big organizations and newspapers to withdraw their rewards. They did not want her found because she wasn't in danger. She's in a witness protection program. So apparently Gerald went on the dark web and made arrangements to have her kidnapped by some gypsies in Portugal at Praia de Luz. And it looks like he manipulated some friends of his into making it look like it was all their idea. But what he didn't know was the people he was talking to on the dark web were undercover this was a sting. And because he made arrangements to transport her to a foreign country and Portugal specifically, because the two target destinations for that family vacation, some of the families in the, they weren't necessarily buddies. They weren't necessarily close friends. 
right, the top of seven or whatever, Greece and Portugal, which coincidentally enough, Poland, Greece, and Portugal are your human trafficking golden triangle in Europe today. <laughs> and certainly were the day she disappeared. This was an expansion of an operation that was going on in Britain for years. And now they, which was totally, it was technically illegal to conduct a sting operation on Portuguese soil, but they couldn't alert Portuguese authorities because there were a lot of crooked Portuguese authorities, really crooked country. Portugal is an unbelievably crooked country. Unbel and it's basically a colony of England anyway. It's been a colony of England for like a thousand years. There's never been a war between Portugal and England. They've never been enemies. It's basically been a colony of England for 500 years or 200 years, or I don't care how you split that hair. But she was the bait in, an inter in a multinational sting operation that netted eight convictions that I know of. See, that was one of the funny things that was like, but she disappeared right, right in front of the eye, right before the eyes of this big, huge sting operation that you've never heard of. And it, it, it's, so she was the bait, but she was kidnapped by undercover agents who ha handed her over to a foster family and the dink, dink, dink to a foster family who were very easy to find. <laughs> and yes, they know I found them. And that was really the icing on the cake. <laughs> Because I was talking to this person and they said, how did you hear about me? And I said, well, you've worked with so-and-so before, right? And silence for about 15 or 20 seconds and then click. So there wasn't any doubt I was right. And I got the pictures to prove it. I can't display the pictures. <laughs> it's an invasion of the young lady's privacy. At this time, I'm waiting for her to make herself a public figure, but she might not know who she is. And she might not want to be reunited with the man, with the so-called father who sold her to the goddamn gypsies. Here's the thing people don't understand. Everybody assumes two things. Everybody assumed that Gerald and Kate ran it together. You just assume that. It's just an assumption. It never crossed their mind that maybe Gerald lied to Kate. And the second stupid assumption people make it, well, and you've had a lot of help in this with this phony publicity campaign. Every time her birthday comes around, they, she's so dead. Madeline is so fucking dead. There's no reason for her to even ask if she's still alive. Which they've been doing with Craig Glassman and a lot of other people. Okay. My point is this. What was my point? She's not dead. No. The second myth is that all of their friends all lied. They all told big lies about that night to cover up for their friends Kate and Gerald McCann. Because they're all in a conspiracy to cover this thing up. Even if it's, you know, accessory after the fact. None of that is, this, is true at all. <laughs> One person lied and lied and lied and admitted he lied and admitted he tampered with the shutter on the window. And that was Gerald McCann. Kate was just as baffled as everybody else, but she told the truth. The closest thing to a lie Kate told, and years later, I think she's actually been allowed to see Madeline. This family actually traveled back to the UK, very close to where the McCanns live at, for, for an extended holiday. And I think maybe Kate was allowed to see her. It's a hunch. But as soon as you realize every single person is telling the truth, the only thing Kate kind of fudged was the thoughts that went through her mind. Because what clearly happened was she, the plan worked perfectly, except that for this other thing. And so she reported that Madeline had wandered off. She was a lost child. That's what she was supposed to do. 
Then Gerald noticed the shutter was still open and the window was still open. He did, he had planned the perfect crime, but he made one mistake. His accomplice was too short to reach the shutter from outside the window on the sidewalk. Inside that house, you step up into the ground floor, that bedroom floor. And his accomplice was too short to reach up and close the shutter. Tanner man, the person Jane Tanner saw carrying Madeline away up that street where the search dogs tried to go and the lead detective ordered them to come back. No, you search down at the beach. You don't go up that street. Not the guy who said he carried his kid home later. That's a different guy. Go in the opposite direction. Tanner man is not a lie concocted by Jane Tanner. I will show you a photograph of Tanner man. And no, it's not. And it's not that bullshit. Those sketches of the Podestas either. That's more disinfo prop that they encourage. No. Tanner man, and then there's the second accomplice, the tall guy with the, the snaggle tooth tall guy wearing the fright wig. I'll show you a photograph of him. And those two people know each other. Those two people were undercover operatives working for uh, Scotland Yard in the home office. They didn't raise Madeline. They handed her off to a foster family who were very easy to find. As soon as I recognized those two people, as soon as I realized that Kate had told the truth, when she walked into that bedroom, the window and the shutter were wide open. The person who tampered with the shutter was Gerald McCann when he panicked and realized something had gone wrong with the plan. And he admitted it to the cops the next day. He's the one who tampered with the shutter. Kate had told the truth. The only thing she fudged the truth about was, oh, no, no, the first thing I thought when I saw that she was gone was that she had been snatched. No, the first thing she thought was that, and that was the plan. But then Gerald realized, well, that plan's not going to work because she didn't climb out the fucking window. The window and the shutter were supposed to be closed. The accomplice who reached in through the window and took Madeline off that second bed that was underneath the window was too short to reach the shutter from the outside. Everybody else told the truth to the police. Everybody told the truth to the police except Gerald McCann, who admitted that he lied and who admitted that he tampered with the shutter. Those are his fingerprints on the shutter. And as soon as you realize that, even Kate had been lied to. And the rumor that had gone around forever was that Gerald thought that she was not, that Kate had had an affair, possibly with one of the top of seven, and that that was actually, and that he was too smart to murder the child. He wouldn't get away with it. So he made this plan and he manipulated these friends of his into helping him with this plan. And see, something went wrong. He had it timed to the minute and something went wrong, but it was too late to change the plan. The real mistake he made was he had no plan B when something went wrong and something did go wrong and he had no plan B. It was too late to signal his accomplices, which he didn't understand were working for... They were undercover anyway. There were six, six likely, four absolutely for sure in Pride de Luche that weekend. And this was all part of this huge operation that I knew about already. I'm like, she disappeared right in front of their eyes and they never found any trace of her? Then they had this... But they got eight convictions. Gee, what a coincidence. It had nothing whatsoever to do. And then I start reading the actual police reports. The, ne the Myth number three, those corpse-sniffing dogs are not corpse-sniffing dogs. English corpse-tracking dogs and Portuguese. They're not trained with human cadaver tissue. It's against the law. If they really wanted to get it, they would have brought in American. But that guy... What's his name? The con artist. I mean, his dogs were trained to find pork pig cadavers, not human cadavers. Now it's close enough. If you're in an earthquake disaster zone and you're just looking for bodies, it's close enough. But even the night that Madeline disappeared, one team of tracking dogs were fooled by some rotten pork that had been left by a, a previous uh, guest who didn't clean out the refrigerator. 
that and then if you watch the raw video grime grimes grimy grime you watch the raw video he's obviously coaching the dogs <laughs> that was bullshit and then the british tabloid media all reported oh madeline's dna was found inside that rental car that was literally fake news. They all printed retractions the next day. Well, no, it wasn't. They didn't find any identifiable DNA in that rental car. Sorry. All those crazy conspiracy theories are not true. Was Freud, what not Sigmund Freud's son, Clement Freud, was he involved in the wider pedophile ring that got busted because of this operation? Yeah. Is Madeline buried on his estate? No. You, you got distracted by the shiny and you lost sight of the actual. But if you just read the actual police reports and, blah, and the photographs and you see photographs of Madeline the week she disappeared when her face had started to fill out and who she really was, then you realize why they published all those other photographs. They don't see it, the thing when I started looking into it, it became obvious instantly. This is exactly like Jimmy Hoffa. This is exactly like every other witness protection person. Jimmy Hoffa was not rubbed out by the mafia. J Jimmy Hoffa went into the witness protection program. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody ever thought of this. That's why they keep pretending he's dead. There are lots of people they pretend. I've, as a private investigator, I have tracked down people who, oh, oh, <laughs> you're supposed to be dead. The people back home, cops told me you were dead. Imagine your embarrassment. Okay, this happens all the time. There's the official witness protection program with very few people actually got into. Then there's just this way of faking your death. And they keep publicizing your death so that nobody forgets that you're dead and there's no point in looking for you. That's the Madeline McCann. That might have to actually be a pay-per-view. We'll see what happens. If I can sell that story. Two, does hard copy still on the air? <laughs> I might be tempted to do that. But here's the thing. She's not in any danger and it might do, it would do, even if she knew who she was, put yourself in her shoes. What's the happy ending here? She's reunited with her mother who decided to play along with this farce at some point. She's reunited with the man who may or may not be her biological father and who tried, definitely tried to sell her, literally sell her to the gypsies. Does she ever want to see his? What good would come of it? It's just standard operating procedure. They do this a lot. The murder of Seth Rich, the murder of Vince Foster, the murder of... They do this a lot. They concoct these phony stories. So when I tell people, oh, the son is Sam, a lot of that media hype was actually deliberately put out by this Operation Mockingbird. People are like, oh, that's a crazy conspiracy theory. I'm like, no, you don't understand. They pull this shit all the time. It's just not always quite as big a story as Zodiac or Son of Sam or Manson. They do this all the time. Cops lie, police officials. It's only like if it's a cop, he's probably telling the truth. She, if it's a deputy chief, they are lying and they're lying for a reason. <laughs> okay, they do this all the time. So I wasn't the least bit surprised when evidence actually came out. There's a pattern here Manson, Zodiac. There isn't just wild press speculation, it's being fed by very specific. Very interesting people. And then it fits this pattern. The real motive was it's a mixture of organized crime. The CIA does business with the mafia who are doing business with the QLF or doing business with the KGB. So everybody is this close to being exposed. So everybody starts throwing smoke bombs. Not because they're in it together, but because they are in it together. Not the Polish chick, no, but it's interesting because there's that. It didn't start and stop with Roman Polanski. Human trafficking between Greece, Portugal, and Poland has been going on since the end of World War II.
Is Conair the only plane that doesn't need a transponder? I don't know, but there's such a thing as transponder spoofing. Transponders can be hacked. Guess where they do that at? There's a very famous, for not being famous, maintenance, aircraft maintenance facility in a little town called 70s. I know exactly how transponder spoofing was done. See, the thing is, it's like, it's like, um, it's just got a seal on there. If the FAA inspector ever looks at the plane and the transponder box, the seal's been broken, that's how he knows that it's been tampered with. Otherwise, he's not going to know. Rich Hall. Who's Rich Hall? Not the comedian Rich Hall. From David Letterman. The old David Letterman show. Rich Hall used to do the news. Before Chris Elliott was, it was Rich Hall. Is that the guy? Yeah, it's only YouTube where we get this kind of lag. So important episodes, but the public episodes to draw the chumps in off the street. Or people, this is your chance now to subscribe. Or if you want to wait a month or two, like I'm not guaranteeing a whole lot. Uh, every week, but, um, buffered at the town name. Really? What town? Which town was I talking about? Not Praia de Luz. FBI still looks for Hoffa. Yeah, right. The FBI still releases a press release that they're looking for Hoffa. <laughs> they know where Hoffa is. He's probably the one writing the press releases. I'm sure he's dead by now. The mafia don't make people disappear. Paul Castellano didn't disappear. <laughs> Which, Mina, Arkansas. Mina, Arkansas. I'll say it again and again and again. Mina, Arkansas. But that's only a rumor. That's only a hunch. Uh... Yeah, Rich Hall, who wrote Stinglitz, is that the guy you're talking about? He's a podcaster? Well, post the link. Put a link in the comment. <laughs> That's the guy? That's cool. Now, Dan Aykroyd's UFO work. Dan Aykroyd was a brilliant man. I don't know about his... Is he still alive? I've lost track of who's dead and who's alive. I, I couldn't believe Michelle Phillips is still alive. She's still out for revenge against the that Jill, that broad who replaced her in the Mamas and the Papas. Rich Planet? Hi, Bill. How's the wife? How would he know? When was the last time you think they saw each other? You notice she's never in any of those compromising photographs. So Rich Hall does some conspiracy stuff? Well, look at the shit that Corey Haim took all, and Corey Feldman took all those years. Not one apology from the people who trashed them for all those years. He's a bit jaded now. Comedians are jaded people. That's why we're comedians. We think the world is funny. You don't think the world is funny if your heart is breaking. Laugh, clown, laugh, though your heart is breaking. That's what we do. He's homesteading on the moors now. Rich, Rich Hall is homesteading on the moors. Are you guys playing with me? Are you guys messing with old prof? I was going to talk about the news. 37 concurrent viewers, that's good. So put, that, put out the word. It's a different Rich Hall. Okay. But Rich Hall was doing it. Now there's another Rich Hall. There's the Rich Hall before. There's the Rich Hall before Rich Hall. And then there's the Rich Hall after Rich Hall. The Charles Manson before Charles Manson. The only reason I bring up Madeline McCann is this, this multinational pedophile ring that they were and covered up for by officials is something that will be of interest to us. But I got to be careful what I say because I could show you there's no legal reason why I can't show you who did what. That's just tough titties. That's just journalism. And these people would have to understand, believe me. But 
it would make it super duper easy for anybody to find Madeline McCann. Because as soon as I show you who did it, you'll be able to find Madeline McCann. <laughs> Somebody, any, any decent private investigator. I don't even live in that country and I found her. And yeah, there's been corroboration. I just don't, number one, if I'm wrong, you know, this young lady would be about Madeline's age, about 20. I don't want to turn her life upside down. There's zero doubt about who did what. I mean, forget Zodiac, forget Manson, forget. There's no mystery about what happened to Madeline McCann at all. And as soon as you realize, number one, she's not dead. That's why they keep pretending she's dead. That's why they went around. I mean, they really leaned on these organizations and newspapers to withdraw their rewards. They do that every time it's a missing mobster. Why, wouldn't, why would it be any different? And then when you realize nobody lied except Gerald McCann, and he was just using people, manipulating people, he's, used, he's a sociopathic manipulator, a damn good one. He's really smart. This was a great plan. But like all con artists, he outsmarted himself. He didn't realize the British dark web was crawling with informants and operatives. He was talking to them the whole time, but they weren't just after him. They were after this multinational ring. Well, he was smart enough to figure out he was, that's what happened. And that's why he brings in the media. That's why he brings in all these other people. He's threatening to, because what they did was technically illegal. It was technically an act of war. Andrew Johnson and Andrew Johnson knew Richard D. Hall. I'm thinking of President Andrew Johnson. You probably heard about me from Opperman. How is Ed? <laughs> that guy's life. When does he have time to do a show? He has a life. His daughter ever graduate from college? I hit him up. I, there was a producer, and, and I'm like, then you know, I'm like, well, Opperman, we've. So I talked about, hey, let's go get, let's go track down Madeline again, we'll be on TV. <laughs> <clears throat> if Australia is too tough for Steve Irwin, Australia is too tough for me. <laughs> You ever watch those documentaries? There have been some great documentaries on PBS Documentaries channel. And one of them proves me right about something I've been saying on this podcast for years. <clears throat> it's about the pyramids. Well, I don't want to take up a lot of your time with nothing. Maybe tomorrow night, Tuesday night. I want to do an evening stream anyway. Um, I get a... Uh, what's going on? I got to get my taxes done. <laughs> I got to get, get my taxes done. But I have an episode really close to going. But I also want... I'm just waiting for everybody to get signed up on the new site. At least subscribe to the email alerts for free. No credit card information, no nothing. Okay. You really dig the Great Pyramid? That's a good one. I love puns. I really do. Um, don't get me started. Uh, this one is about the cult that is murdering your children today. They did a documentary about this guy, and they had no idea. They had no idea. Um... I'm like, there it is. There it is. There it is. Well, that's not the only thing. but <laughs> <laughs> So I am working on presenting this information in a little bit more finished form. And then people can, they need, need to work as teasers, not just, for, not just for my own selfish channel. I could care less or not care less as the case may or may not be. But... There's some people asking me, hey, show us what you can do. So let me show, let me try what I can do on my own. They know I'm doing it all by myself. When you watch these documentaries, you don't understand. You, there's a person on camera for 10 seconds at a time. You don't have no idea how much work other people have done for the, to get those 10 seconds on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You're not the bad students. You're the cheapskates. I don't know. Some of you use different names. That's why I don't like to use a lot of names on the air to give credit. If you ask, hey, man, could you please, you know, Manny's not shy about asking. Hey, I brought that up. Well, sort of. A monument? Oh, it's also a monument. It's also, well, also one of the really cool things is they found a papyrus from, they have found new chambers under the Pyramid of Khufu, the Great Pyramid of Khufu, including a papyrus. It's a spreadsheet, and it's really cool. And they found the statue, a very detailed, obviously realistic statue of the guy who created it, the master builder who built the Great Pyramid of Khufu. It's really cool. And it mentions... For the first time, they know what the Egyptians called it. And apparently it's what they called all of those pyramids. And I'm saving that for uh, a future episode. But they, I'm like, I was right. I was. It's not just me. There's another guy. There are some people who have said, you know, it looks like they're trying to build heaven on earth. It looks like they're trying to duplicate the map of, the, of Orion and the Milky Way. They're they're right about that, but they didn't know necessarily know why. It's like we're we're trying to signal heaven. We've built heaven on earth. I don't think so. As I will go into great detail, I think they saw it as there's heaven. That from when you're in heaven, it looks like the earth, and they don't necessarily realize that we can see part of that. So they they believed in an underworld. There's a really cool, there's a really cool place. Um, that's now underwater, just on the just on the beaches of England, where several thousand, like the Stonehenge people did try to do the same thing. They re- they thought there's another world under us, and we look like the sky to them. We look like heaven, and we need to build this heaven to be like that heaven to guide those people toward. So that's what they were doing, and they thought that they had instead of helping a dead king, they're not called Pharaoh in those days ascend to heaven and become a god, they would keep him in this massive thing that would hold him. And it looked like it lit up when it was covered in the polished white limestone. It would light up like the moon under starlight, let alone moonlight, and and do other things. So it's like, that's exactly what I thought. And they found this papyrus that proves me right. Um, And you will see that soon. And then there's the tomb of this guy from 2,000 years later that I think is, that's like the beginning of this cult that the Freemasons, who used to be called Rosicrucians until they infiltrated the Scottish Freemasons, what the Rosicrucians thought was Hermes Trismegistus or whoever, they have found his tomb and they don't know it. They have found the tomb of the man that I think the Rosicrucians think was Hermes Trismegistus or Hiram Abiff or whatever. And it's, and what they found proves me right. And I think is the key more or less in various forms as it evolved over the centuries. Remember a big, a big institutionalized religion like Judaism or Christianity or even Islam, which is based on a printed text, and there are millions of copies in libraries all over the world, bomb-proof libraries. Well, thank you, Sticky Marks. Yeah, I will get your... Um, I saw that you subscribe to email alerts, Sticky Marks. Let me see if I can get your actual subscription. There will be a tip jar like there is here. Um and then I've got the book for sale and there will be other books for sale. The store is coming along. I'm kind of opening. There's like, there's one book on the shelf now. There's one video on the shelf now. There's one thing on the shelf now. Luther was a Rosicrucian, maybe. So, um, that's all coming up. But I'll probably let you go. The links are all in the description of this video how to sign up, and the link to click on to sign up. I'm not sure there's a help page. There's a WordPress help page, but then there's my help page. So I'm not terribly worried that people haven't signed up yet because a few people at a time sign up and see if it works. (laughs) And then, so Orfeo... I will see if it rejects your card or if there's... If for any reason a transaction is not completed... 
I, I get a record of that. And then it will tell me there's a webhook missing. So like there was a pop-up that was supposed to pop up because of your card. And I didn't have that webhook enabled. I don't see your card information or anything like that. I just see what, what goes wrong when a transaction doesn't go through. If you don't see that confirmation that you see in the how-to video, do not, don't even really try again. Let me know. Take a screenshot. That really helps. And, and copy the link of the page you were on when you hit the error. See, even my, the technical support that I pay for, they need that information anyway. No, Adam, you don't need to cancel anything. I have manually canceled everything. You should not be billed for anything from them ever again. That is a very good question. I answered it once before. I'm glad you brought it up. And hi, Adam. Adam hung in there, tough. Yeah, nobody's been charged by Patreon for a long time, right? Thank you, Edward. Mwah. Thank you, Sticky Mark. Mwah. Um, one more reason I like YouTube for the live streaming side, and then I can edit the episodes and put them up. Uh, celebrate the first super chat from Edward Meets. Oh, it's not the first super chat. I've had super chat from Edward Meets before. Um. You should not be charged from anything. You got to charge the other day. Maybe. Was that your last March payment? Was that your March payment? Was that the end? Was the end of the month your last payment? <laughs> That's why you got those three free months or whatever. Let me look at your, don't do anything. Do nothing. Let me look at your account as soon as the stream is over and we'll see where we're at. And we'll go from there. You'll get, something will happen. You'll get your, you'll get everything you deserve. I promise. Yeah, if you got charged from Uscreen one more time for March, that's where you get the three free months, April, May, and June, on the new site. That's why you got the promo code. If you accidentally paid already, I could refund your money. It's easier for me to give you just another month's credit. But that's up to you guys. I'm not trying to rook you out of any money. I need you people to participate and leave comments so it looks like somebody there. Sometime six to 12 months, hopefully I will be on TV and I will get this flood of publicity and people will be tearing down the doors to sign up for the website. It needs to be ready and it needs to be. But yes, and I do appreciate your patience and you guys are going to get never forgotten. I can't possibly thank you people enough, so I won't bother trying. Um, no, 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 no. You guys will get goodies forever. Okay, yeah, but let me know if you have any problems, any confusions, or if you got charged, if you get charged again, because that's all been canceled. I, I don't want to get rich and famous. I'm too old to have money. That's not my business model, but thank you very much for the kind wishes. I'm just having fun. I'm loving doing this podcast. I'm working on it all day. But I learned a lot of stuff even from doing that other website. Now I know what it is I want, and then I can find out how it's done, and I realize how easy it is to do. Like, they weren't really doing a whole lot. But they wanted to sell me a branded app. I'm not knocking them. It just wasn't quite what we were looking for. You know, they're, they, they cater more to, like, fitness gurus, cooks. Like, it's not really their bag. But there were just features like I couldn't I couldn't reply to anybody's comments or posts. There's no reason for that. That's right, Pat Thomas. And then the thing is, like I said, if I had a hundred subscribers, two hundred subscribers, you know, that's a that's I could spend a lot of money on the show and still be. But we're we're doing fine. If I get the same number of paying subscribers I had from before all signed up by like Labor Day. We're going to have all the features. We, we're going to have more features. You know, competition has come along. That's another thing. So um, so if you haven't downloaded any of the videos from Uscreen that you wanted to download, I'll be posting them again. But some of them are pretty rough, and I probably just make new ones. I'm going to make a whole new series about John Bonet before, before I get famous. So it's ready to roll out. I just want to redo that. 
better technical and with a lot more new information that you're going to see in rough draft form as we go along. You know, there's, there's you guys, which I love doing the show for, but there's also, um, it's going to rain here pretty soon and I need to set out as many buckets as I can. And then I want a lot of those people. I'm hoping there'll be enough people. I can start doing that commentary show like the Paul Harvey type show where I read the news every day and I spout off about it. And it plugs the Stones Unturned podcast. The Stones Unturned podcast isn't really why I want my make a lot of money. It's I write other books. I teach a lot of classes that are worth taking. And this is just going to publicize that. And then if we can just keep it. But if I get a thousand subscribers, that's great. But I don't want 10,000, 100,000 subscribers. That's, they, they're not looking for this show anyway. <laughs> And what you're really paying for is the privilege of arguing and bitching in the comment section. That's what you're paying for. These free comments that you guys are free chat. Well, I think comments are closed. You have to go to my website. You have to pay to comment. And that'll keep the Neos and the Rubies and the Mannies out. And the Tom Voights and the... Oh, thanks, Medley. You guys are so nice. The next thing we're going to get, money-wise, will be paying for... Uh, I mean, I can pay like a year in advance. I can, it's that affordable and then it's always there. So we're going to be getting replay for sure, like long-term storage of videos. And then especially like when they're, when they're in clusters with one big discussion board, those will be loaded with features that are coming out all the time. So, um, someday I'm sure YouTube will offer a search within the video, but like it's getting rolled out player built. And then they just give me the embed code and I, I, and I see where to put it. So that'll be nice. A lot of really nice features on the new things. I thought were going to work out on you screen are just not working out or would cost too much money. I'm paying them to do what, honestly, I'd rather do my, I'm a shade tree mechanic. So, um, That's the name of a Don, Don Denver song, isn't it? I'm Shade Tree Mechanic. <laughs> um, no, and you guys keep it. It's, it's, and legally putting it behind a paywall helps a little bit. And keeping it small. If I had a million subscribers, that had the same problem YouTube has. But if I keep it under a couple of hundred subscribers, and I'll take as many as I can get, but you know, they're going to come and go. I'll make a million dollars in one month and that'll be it. I could just do this show the rest of my life. <laughs> but to pay for, then the thing I would be saving up for is paying for trips. Because if, if the overhead is cheaper, I can go to places like, um, I can go to places, you know, old, uh, not just necessarily Son of Sam, but I can go to a lot of cool places to go around the St. Louis area. You know, the original locations of the true story of the exorcist. It didn't happen at Georgetown University. It happened here at St. Louis University. Things like that. I can just do those kinds of walk and talks and things. Orfeo, you haven't seen the episodes about the mamas and the papas, have you? Because you didn't subscribe to Uscreen, which is fine. Those episodes... Have you seen those, Orfeo? I just did one about was Mama Cass murdered. I'm not saying John Denver was in on a plot to murder Mama Cass. I'm saying that Barry DeSinko is living in John Denver's old biodome. And boy, did that guy get interesting. We're going to talk a lot more about him. It's weird. It's weird how... There's this the whole Son of Sam blob, the whole thing. Thing. Everything, Nugent Hand is over here, and the CIA, and the QLF, and the KGB. And it comes down to this point there, at, at a town called Minot, North Dakota, where there's an Air Force base and a hospital, a base hospital. And at the tip of that point is a serviceman called John Carr from Yonkers, New York. It all leads down to that one guy, John Carr. Then you have, you have, you have, um, you have Columbine High School, you have John Benet Ramsey, you have Mossad, you have, okay, CIA, you have, comes down to this point at Minot, North Dakota, 
it has a lot of points. There's points in Boulder, Colorado. It comes down to this point in Minot, North Dakota, and the tip of that point apparently is a guy named Barry. Um, what's his name? Barry some Barry Desinko. Maybe not. I could be a hundred percent wrong. But he is a convicted felon, and he does have proven criminal associations with certain people. And it's just really funny that they're both connected to Minot, North Dakota. Now, Maury Terry wrote a book where he wrote about a guy called Larry Malenko, who sounds an awful lot like he could be Barry DeSinko. And supposedly, the whole point of The Ultimate Evil is that Barry DeSinko, or that Larry Malenko and John Carr knew each other, and they knew each other in Minot because they both belonged to a cult in, around the Minot area. I can't find that. But I can, find the, I can bring these two blobs close together, and it's, it comes down to John Carr and Barry DeSinko. Who did live in the same town at the same time and have a lot of common interests. Those are the things we'll be talking about in the next episode, in the next few episodes. Remember, Maury had to take a lot from the private detective he hired, and he's interesting. Well, I'm not accusing John Denver of knowing anything, but I think it's interesting that Barry DeSinko. And he and his wife, they're in the music business, have been for years. If you want to learn about organic farming on a commercial scale to make a living as an organic farmer, not just how to grow stuff, but how to sell it, how to market it, how to make a deal with somebody who will come and pick up your produce and take it to the grocery stores. If you want to learn how to grow and, and then like, like they know all about sugar beets, if you live in the Great Plains, organic sugar beets are, are a, a, not a bad cash crop. It's not a bad cash crop. If you don't mind breaking your back 14 hours a day. No, they have machines now, but you got to plant those potatoes in a nice straight row. So you dig them up in a nice straight potatoes, <laughs> sugar beets. I know a lot about sugar beets and it's easy to go organic with sugar beets. It's really easy to grow sugar beets organically. They will teach you everything you need to know about it. And then you can sign up for their co-op or whatever, where they'll help you find a market for your, you can grow against, you know, whatever it is you're growing organically. But it just seems really funny that his name pops up over and, and it's just the tip of this point. It's like Mad, uh, it's like uh, John Benet Ramsey, that murder case herself. You have the Ballards and the Dunnans, and you have you have uh, Lockheed, and you have Mossad, and you have National Reconnaissance Office, and you have North Fox Island, and it all comes. And in Minot, North Dakota, it seems like those that person's Barry DeSinko, and then there's this John Carr fellow who, according to Maury Terry, is linked to Larry Malenko, with no evidence whatsoever. I can't prove that they're linked. I can prove he's linked to everything else under the sun. I can prove he works in the same industry as Darlene Farron's ex-husband, Jim Phillips Crabtree, and, his, and Sonny. I don't know if they're legally married. I would call them a common-law husband and wife, but I don't want to be accused of poor journalistic standards by saying Sonny is his wife. She's older than he is. She's in, you talk about Operation Mockingbird. John Denver dead in a helicopter accident. That's right, Channel, an aviation accident. And he was very involved in experimental aircraft and things, right? John Ramsey's father was heavily involved in experimental aircraft, right? He was the one involved in experimental aircraft. Maybe not experimental. No, the one who was a transport pilot. Maybe that was him. He was involved in experimental. Won an award. Well, the music industry was actively penetrated by intelligence, I think, Pat Thomas, because of its influence over the culture. They thought they could, between the fluoridation, the music, and everything, they could control. You know, that's what Muzak was all about, an attempt to control people's behavior. Why not? Why not? Bismarck School, a teacher. Oh, hi, Sticky Marks. But Sonny, partner of, but if you say partner, then everybody assumes they're gay, which if there's a repressed latent homosexual walking this member of the He-Man Woman Beaters, Wife Beaters Club walking this planet, it's Jim Phillips Grabdry.
Why not mine on their town logo? Okay. In Montana, everything is blue sky. Blue sky dog wash. Blue sky <laughs> organic sugar beets. Blue sky proctology. Blue sky, it's everything. Blue sky tanning. Well, it's been almost two hours. Maybe I'll let you guys go. The thing, oh, what I like about it is, the, the thing about the tipping is, and being able to do it for tips, is it reminds me of being a bartender, where we sit around and we solve the world's problems all night, except I get to do all the talking. As a bartender, I used to have to do most, I did very little talking. I did a lot of listening to a lot of crazy conspiracy theories from a lot of very intelligent people. <laughs> now I get to do the talking. If I want to say hello to the chat, I say hello to the chat. <laughs> my grandmother, my dad's mother, crazy. Both of my grandmothers were universally acc acclaimed as totally insane ladies. And she would, she could go on for days. My grandmother would be ranting and raving about something and you'd fall asleep and you'd wake up and she was still talking. She should have been, a, she should have had a podcast. She would have been, forget Mae Brussel, forget, um, have you seen the, um, the uncensored, not uncensored granny, the old lady who answers questions. She's hilarious. Some old lady. It's been bouncing around fake book. Muzak? Oh, yeah. I may be mad, but my methods are not. Here's the thing. I never tell you anything that you can't go Google yourself. Or Manny can't go Google himself. I just have the help from all of you people. It's, it's when I, it's I, the royal we. There's no, I kid about that, but... The Grateful Dead was interesting. The cult called themselves the cult. Blue Oyster Cult called themselves Blue Oyster Cult. Listen to wrestling on the radio? Sure. Baseball's perfect for radio. Baseball's perfect for radio. Um, uh, well, the, okay, it's been about two hours. Thank you all so much. I'm hard at work. I have a lot more time. I got to get my taxes done. I got to, I'm working some overtime, filling in for another teacher for a couple of weeks. And then summer, I'm really retired. So um, just back to teaching part-time online, apparently. A few classes here and there, which is fine. And I've gotta, I got to get this website going anyway. Lots of things on the website. It won't just be the Stones Unturned podcast. But thank you all so very, very, very much. It's, it, it isn't even just be like being able to pay for stuff. But when people are committed, you know, when they put their money where their commitment is, that's a sign that the show is worth putting the work into redoing the studio. And I think I got, I think it's great. And it's my little bat cave. <laughs> I can let the expletives fly. Um... Sex Pistols were started in Sex Shop. Mm hmm. Probably Lord Boothby, I'm sure, had a lot to do. The kind of. I mean, Lord Boothby, if they had mosh pitting when he was a young man, he would have done it. Well, I call it slam dancing. Mosh pits are kind of. Mosh pits are for girls. I call it slam dancing. But it's. Um, he would have been into that. He would have been into that for sure. You had to watch. You had to watch for guys like that. <laughs> the thing is, man, as a bartender, I'd go fill in for people. Why didn't you fucking warn me what Tuesday night was all about? Well, I thought you knew, honey. No, I didn't. <laughs> I 
women know what I'm talking about. Some guys think you're just playing hard to get. And you, and it's, you know, being right is one thing. <laughs> Making it at home in one piece is another. <laughs> right, ladies? You got to be. And some girls are into it. Some boys are into it. That's the problem. And you got to watch out. Somebody gets the wrong idea. What are you doing here, son? You know, you got to watch out. I'm all for bringing shit out in the open. I don't want to walk into surprises. I don't have a problem with people who, if that's really what they're into and it's really consensual, what I'm saying is <laughs> it's a lot easier to sit here <laughs> and have someone get the wrong idea than it is to be walking down a dark alley with somebody having the wrong idea. But that exists, too. The only gay men that you ever see in movies and TV are fairies. The stereotype of the fairy who is girly and meek and bitchy but not dangerous. That's a small proportion. There are more Achilleos, right? Achilles, right? The thing about when you watch, when you watch the Brad Pitt version of... Troy and you watch you watch uh you watch um the Road Warrior, Mad Max the Road Warrior. They have an Achilles character. But but Patrocles in those movies is your stereotypical boy toy, he's a little fairy, he's a little whatever. That's not Patrocles. Patrocles is a Achilles in training. Achilles is his mentor and protector on the battlefield, but Patrocles is but he doesn't have the experience that Achilles has to go and go one-on-one -on -one against Hector. That's the problem. It's not that he's a little sissy boy who can't wear the armor. It's that he's not ready yet. And what has happened here, is Achilles is very childish. Achilles brings his mommy to war. I'm not kidding. And when Achilles is very, very upset, his mommy makes him feel better. And I'm not kidding. He's a stereotype of the hyper-masculine killing machine who women are just, he doesn't like girls anyway. That's the argument he's having at the beginning of the story is he's arguing with Agamemnon. Agamemnon has come into his tent and he wants to take this girl back, this slave girl that they, you know, they capture the girls and they divvy them up like gold. And he wants to take her back. And Achilles is like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? He said, well, I had to give back. Well, that's your problem, your majesty. And Achilles and Agamemnon is like, well, what do you care, mama's boy? You don't even like girls. So that's the, you know, and Agamemnon is like, hold me back. Hold me back. You know, because he, he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Achilles. And Achilles, who's been killing people all day long, says, if I wasn't so arm worried from wearing, winning your battles for you, I would kill you myself. That's the opening scene. And they're fighting over this girl who's been booty. But Achilles doesn't even like girls. He's that hyper-masculine well, there's a whole bunch of cops and a whole bunch of firemen and a whole bunch of prison guards and a whole bunch of soldiers and a whole bunch of super soldiers. They had to keep it on the down low. That was dangerous for everybody. But you don't understand. They never show those. If you've seen the movie Little Caesar with Edward G. Robinson, the uncut version as it survived. Oh, he's gay. But he's not you know, they have in those old pre-code movies, they will have the fairy type, the dandy, whatever you want to call them. But that's not even the majority of gay men, homosexual men or bisexual men, just so you know. Girls are probably more danger. We you really got to watch out because a regular customer and a stalker are very hard to tell apart. But it can happen to guys. It happens to guys. And of course, they don't talk about it. It didn't happen to me. I'm too pretty. <laughs> I, I, I intimidate men with my beauty. Well, the king sacrifices his daughter. And this is a period in history when it's hard to tell who's, like, which culture is this war really about? Are these Phoenicians? Are these Minoans? Are these, right? We're going to talk about that. And yes, I think it matters a lot that Agamemnon sacrifices his own daughter at the age of seven. She's seven years old. 
Epigenia, Epigenia. And I think it's interesting that in, it's a better movie than you think. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire, the name he takes, this transgendered character, the name she takes is uh, Effie, Ephigenia, from the girl who sacrificed by her own father for the purpose of this grand success. But it's a war Agamemnon doesn't want, right? He's obligated by his brother, whose wife has disappeared with this other man. And after 20 years, does it matter if it was rape or if it was elopement? What difference does it make anymore? That's what part of that story is about. Women were absolutely commodities. What do you think Helen was? She's not as pretty. She's the high priestess of the fertility cult. Without her, you know, there's a theory that this may have been based on the idea that because when the wind is blowing contrary, it's also uh, cold and dry in Greece. And if it did that for seven years, if they had seven years of cold, cold, dry summers and winters, they would have had crop failure. And the king gets blamed for this. And the high priestess of the fertility cult would be blamed for this. Or that if she had run off with another warlord and drought sets in, we got a problem. Like, it's possible that this is where some of these ideas come from, for sure. But in the Iliad, in the Achilliad, in these stories, it's never answered. The question's never really answered. Was it, was she kidnapped or did she run off? It's never answered, ever. That's one of the, what makes it such a great story. One of the things. Hi, hey, Little Mystery. So in the scene where, let me just finish the story, it starts in media rest. It's an argument between these warriors. They've been killing, this is face to face. There's no snipers. Even archery is just like, you start with a volley of arrows and then you go at it. They've been killing each other face to face all day. They are drenched in the blood and brains of their enemies. They haven't even had time to go for a swim on the beach yet. They're getting back to camp for supper at the end of a, they've had a skirmish that day. And Agamemnon taking this girl away from, or he has done it, from Achilles, who doesn't even like girls. It's booty. And it gets into this principle. And then, the, it, then you get this backstory because you get the bitching. You get the bitching. Well, what do you care, mama's boy? You don't even like girls. Well, what, what do you got to blah, blah, blah. And he says, um, and then he reminds him, you know, then he reminds him about this war. He's like, Menelaus, or uh, uh, Paris didn't steal my cow, didn't steal my wife. You know, because the war is all about Menelaus' wife being gone. So he calls on his brother, Agamemnon, I'm going to fight this war, get my wife back, get my pride back, get the priestess of our fertility cult back, whatever. Agamemnon doesn't want this war. They have to stop along the way and sack the holy city of Thebes, who never hurt anybody, according to the story, to pay for Achilles and his Myrmidon mercenaries. Because without them, they can't win this war. And they don't care. They fight for money. So you get these grudges that just, it's this cascade of grudging, bitching among these men. This war has been going on for 10 years. Then you get the backstory. The backstory about him sacrificing his daughter comes from a different, it comes from a play called The Trojan Women, right? And there's the backstory about Agamemnon had sacrificed Iphigenia to get the war started because they're stuck in port. They're starving. The country's starving. Their people are rebelling against them. It's a, it's a, it's an epic tale of the disaster of war, and it destroys, the, it destroys the world. This war destroys the age of heroes. It destroys the... It's the First World War. It's a story about that. It's a story time after time. It, this exact same period of time, we have the story of David and Goliath. The two armies, it's been a stalemate. Their farms are going to pot. we got to... It doesn't matter who wins or loses anymore. So they decide to have the two champions fight it out and we'll go home. This happens multiple times in the Iliad, but every time the war comes this close to just coming to an end and just go home, 
Everybody's losing. Nobody's winning this war. Everybody's losing. Let's just let's just have the two champions fight it out. We'll have Paris or we'll have Hector and Achilles fight it out. We'll go home. We'll have Ajax and Hector, whatever. Every time that happens, cooler heads prevail. Well, we've already sacrificed so much. It can't be. It's so modern. You know, you have the gods who are capriciously interfering, but then it's also character is fate and Agamemnon is pressured into a war he doesn't want and he constantly makes the wrong choices and it all goes back. The reason he takes this girl away from Achilles is because he had to give up the girl that he took from the high priest of Apollo at Thebes. The high priest has shown up in the camp and he comes dragging in the sack of treasure from the temple of Apollo. Apollo was the god of health and healing. He kind of crawls in his hands and knees. Oh, great King Agamemnon. I don't know what the fuck we did to you, but you conquered us and obviously you're great. Here's the entire temple treasury. Entire temple treasury. Give me back my daughter. She's only 12 years old. She's all I got left in the world. Agamemnon says no. And his entire army is aghast. Because they're in it for the money. Because Agamemnon will have to share the booty, portion it out, pro rata. Pro rata. But also, he's the high priest of the god of Apollo from a city that was famous throughout the ancient world for being a holy. This, this is, Apollo loves us. This is the high priest. He can call down a plague on us, right? You understand this, right, general, your majesty? So he says, no. So the guy leaves and he goes back to his burned down temple of Apollo and he calls down a curse on Agamemnon's army and they're afflicted with anthrax, which kills people and animals and everything else. And this is where the story begins. And it's Agamemnon's fault because he insulted the priest of Apollo. So he has, so now he has to send back the daughter and wait and see if maybe the plague will lift. The whole army, they were not just aghast and he turned down the money. They're not just a gas that he called down a curse upon their heads. But as we read this story, we infer there's the code of heroes, the unwritten law of the heroic age. This man offered everything he had. He came in on his hands and knees, paid all the proper respects, even though Agamemnon didn't deserve it. It's an aggressive war. It's a morally wrong war. Offers everything he has in exchange for something reasonable, which is get his daughter back after she's already been gang raped anyway. And he says no. And... This is a disaster for his army. This happens all the time. But then you get like Ajax of Telamon. He thinks he's committed some breach of honor on the battlefield. So he goes back to his tent and commits suicide. Well, that's nice for you and your honor. What's the rest of, what are the rest of us supposed to do tomorrow when we have to go back and fight these people again? What, and then when Odysseus is the only one who makes it home alive to be a father to his son... Agamemnon is stabbed in the back by his own wife the minute he walks in the door. Odysseus' wife has waited. But his house is filled with all of these brats who've been raised without fathers. And they're hitting on his wife. They're eating his food. They're hitting on his wife. They don't know how to be men. And Agamemnon, who's, or uh, 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 Odysseus, who starts out as a coward and a draft dodger and all this stuff, living on the road for 20 years, made him tough. He comes home. He kills all of these fatherless boys. It's a generation of wasted boys. He kills them all. He wipes them all out. It's a massacre. It's a glorious massacre. He can, he can shoot like six guys at a time with his bow. His arrow will go through like six necks at one time, right? Like he just massacres all these fatherless boys because they're a disgrace. But now what's he supposed to tell his son? You should be brave, you should be loyal, you should be patriotic, you should be honorable. They're all dead. Their sons are all dead because they didn't make it home alive to raise their sons. What's he supposed to tell his son? And that's where the story ends. Odysseus was not burdened with sight. Are you talking about... The blind one was Oedipus, and his name is also, like these names are onomatopoeias. Odysseus, the spat upon, the despised, the joker. He's the bad guy of the Trojan War. You've seen Inglorious Bastards and the Nazi who is questioning this guy. He just stopped in for a glass of fresh milk and 
next thing you know, right, is uncovered this Jew who's hiding in the basement. That's Odysseus. That's from the play The Trojan Women, where he gets this mother to tell him where her son is because they want to kill off all the Trojan princes so they don't grow up and like Fortinbras Jr. is on his way to get revenge on Hamlet's father. Odysseus is the bad guy, but he's the only one who lives long enough to be a father to his son. So what's he supposed to teach his son? So Oedipus, Oedipus is an onomatopoeia that means, I know that. Yeah, yes, I know. I know, I know, I know. He knows everything. So then he's blinded. Now he really knows everything. And now he wanders the earth, a blind wise man, yelling at people, you know, you're wasting your, you're working for your car, man. You're, you're paying taxes to a demonic regime. That's how, that's, that's, that's Oedipus. That's Oedipus. Does that make sense? Cassandra was cursed with the gift of prophecy and no one believed her. She prophesied the coming of the Trojans. Remember, the Trojans are like a motorcycle gang. When you watch, when you watch uh, the Road Warrior, the Trojans are the the humongous is Agamemnon, and his monster with the boy toy that's Achilles. You understand that, right? <laughs> Except that Patrocles was not a little shrimpy. He's a fairy cake. Patrocles was also a warrior in training, but he just didn't have the experience. And when he, Achilles is pulling one of his pouts. He's waiting for mommy to come kiss it and make it better. And Patrocles thinks that there's a, some honor at stake and he puts on, the, he goes out and he fights Hector and he gets killed. And Hector feels bad. Hector feels bad because if he'd known it was Patrocles, he wouldn't have killed him. Hector's a civilized man. Hector goes home to his wife and kids at night. Can he really protect them from this marauding gang of Vikings? Bikers? Achilles himself is a killing machine. He's 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's he's Thundar the Barbarian. He's Conan the Barbarian. He's a killing machine. He's a professional warrior. He's, they're they're mercenaries. The Myrmidons are mercenaries. So traditionally, Odysseus was he was a coward. He was a draft dodger. He was a sneak. It's his idea to trick the Trojans and opening the gates with the Trojan horse. He's the bad guy. But in this version that we have come down to us in the form of a novel where they take Odysseus and Telemachia and they put them together in a novel and verse, a father and a son looking for each other, you realize at the end of the story, Odysseus has been telling the story. He's been confessing to these horrible crimes. So is that what he's learned? And you kind of get the sense he's telling his son the story because it's a hero's final duty to tell his story. So like in um, in um, The Great Gatsby, the narrator starts off telling, you know, my father told me this piece of advice. And so it's like, it's a first person narrator. Who's he talking to? My theory is he's talking to his son the way Odysseus is talking to his son. This is implied at the end of Odysseus. Well, sort of. It. There's a lot of tact, tact on endings that we know about. Oh, anti-hero? Maybe. Maybe Odysseus, the version we know of, maybe it cast him as anti-hero. Right? Because he confesses. But then we also, we're told he's the greatest liar of all time. So we don't know if this confession is true or not. First person narrators tend to be unreliable. But the very first line of the book that we have... Um, Odysseus, which is really Odysseus and Telemachia put together, it says, um, Andra moi enepe musa. Of that man in me sing, O muse. He of the many, right, uh, polytropon, hieron, polytropon. The, he of the many ways twisting and the many ways tossed. Sing also the many peoples he met and the many new customs he learned, right? That's what the hero does. Everything you learned, you come home and tell. At the end of the story, you realize he's the one who's been telling the story. And in Greek, Musa. 
can mean of that man in me sing, or it could mean of this man in me sing, O muse. You don't get it till the end of the story. He wasn't, he was talking about himself and he's confessed to doing terrible things. Of course, it's the greatest story ever told. <laughs> now, Polyphemus, many words. He had one eye that went all the way around his head. He did not have one eye in the center of his forehead. That is not a cyclops. Cuclops, circle eye. He had one eye that went all the way around his head. And when he, you know, he blinked, but it was like a donut in the shape of an eye that went all the way around his head. He could see what was going on behind him. Too smart for his own good, right? Because Odysseus has lied to him. What is your name? My name is Menace, which can mean nobody, or it can mean ra rage, or, or, or it could mean like rage, or an enemy coming to get you, like fate is coming to get you, or like, you know, menacing, or menace can mean nobody. So Polyphemus, that's one word he doesn't know. So when he blinds Polyphemus, which is a very cruel thing to do, Polyphemus, they say, I'm being attacked. Well, who's his friends, the other giants? Who's attacking you? Menace. Nobody. Nobody's attacking me. Oh, okay. And they go back to sleep. In the meantime, like you, you heard about the joke, right? About you don't have to outrun a bear. You just have to outrun your friend. Well, Odysseus has fed several of his friends to Polyphemus while he th figures out a plan. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> he throws all of his friends under the bus. He is a liar. He is a cheat. He is a backstabber, literally. He tortures people. He's a coward. He's a draft dodger. He commits every crime. He commits every war crime by the time he makes it home. And he's a braggart and a liar. Right, sees all things. And Polyphemus, he of many words. Like, he knows everything. He's kind of like an Oedipus figure. In the ancient world, um, Athena, Glaucopus Athena, silver-eyed Athena, she's, the, she's an old lady. She has cataracts, silver-eyed, gray-eyed Athena. She's the wise old woman. There were very few old people in the ancient world, and their wisdom was precious. And so it's kind of like, and they people went blind, you know, when you watch O Brother Who Art Thou, there are several blind characters, and that was it was common up until World War II. Blindness was very common, and so you this idea that you lose your sight to gain your sight. By the by, the time you see everything, now you don't see anything, and now you're really only good for one thing, and that is to give people advice, and they give you a piece of bread. We're all Odysseus now, maybe. You think it's an old man by the city gates telling the truth, but then you find out the old man is Gilgamesh. That's right. Um, that's, a, that's a great story. This is the other who was like me, and he's nothing like him. It's just fascinating. Um, he, finds, he finds it. He finds the plant. He finds the tree of life, but then he drops it on the way home, right? Gilgamesh is the one, the goddess. There's a goddess who tells him, well, it's not... Gilgamesh is looking for immortality, and she's like, it's not everything it's cracked up to be. I was never a little girl. I never had parents. I'll never be a mother. I'll never be an old lady. Um, I'll never have children. You mortals get to live a full life, as short as it is. We do, You know, the gods, and like the Greek gods are really perfect examples. Mars is always angry. Mars is always on the warpath. Venus is always drunk high and ready to go always always flirtatious always okay athena sprang fully formed between the two center lobes i think that's fascinating but she's always an old lady she never got to be a little girl she never got to be a teenager never got to be a young mother she has right she's an old lady glaucopus athena silver-eyed athena Mm -hmm. Odysseus is redeeming himself by confessing? Perhaps. Perhaps. Do we trust his confession? 
I mean, really, that's what the word metanoia means. It means changing your mind. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to turn your mind towards new thoughts, and this takes time. Is that what he's done? He's reflected on his life. Like we're all sinners and we're all... Well, thank you for listening. It has been over two hours. This is the kind of episode I wanted to do for a long time. Um, the only thing I don't like about the movie, Oh Brother, Who Art Thou, although it's logical, there's a Christian ending. Ulysses Everett McGill repents. He falls on his knees and asks God for mercy. In real life, Odysseus didn't do that, and he wins. Odysseus beats God. Poseidon has been trying to kill him the whole way home. Odysseus makes it home alive. Odysseus beats God. No, no mythological character has ever beaten God. Put that in your tinfoil hat pipes and smoke it. <laughs> okay, thank you all very, very, very much um, for plugging in. Continue to plug in. Continue to watch this space. Uh, for, uh, not this space, go sign up on the new website. Look at those links in the description of this video and get your, get your stuff together so I can get my stuff together. Stay safe and stay well. Keep watching the skis. Spay and neuter your cannibals. And please stay plugged in to the Stones Unturned podcast at Thomas Henry Horan. Dot com. I'm Professor Thomas Henry Horan, asking you to please stay plugged in to the Stones Unturned podcast. He reads everything.